Hi there! In this episode, I'm going to build something different. I will use two different kits for that. The first one is this Zvezda Ural 4320 in 45 scale. I am not familiar with this type of modeling, but all the kits I've ever built in this genre seems like over-engineered products. This is my personal opinion, of course. Perhaps this is normal. And this is one of them. Amazing details with hundreds of small parts in invisible areas, shallow details on visible areas. Anyway, this kit is a great kit except the tires. I will use this kit for building the cabin of the van. I'm starting to work with cutting and cleaning the parts as usual. The assembly consists of several sub-assembly steps. Of course, I will not show you all of this here. I will show you the assembly of just a few parts to give you an idea about the kit. Since I do not know how visible the engine will be, I complete the entire assembly of the engine. As you can see, a very detailed engine comes with the kit. Since I will make many modifications, I want to start the container assembly as soon as possible. So I am starting to build the chassis. This means that I have to manage to combine dozens of small parts and make a straight chassis without distortion. Let's do it.
Now I can start to build the container. I'm taking measurements for the cut by roughly calculating the center of gravity. Please keep this in mind. This is a post-apocalyptic scenario. Suppose the people who built this structure previously desk job people with no manual labor skills or they have restricted material access. That's why all these modifications has not welded and constructed properly. Then let the surgery begin. I'm cutting the left and right parts with a motor tool and clean the excess pieces with a knife first. And then I'm cutting the floor part with a saw. That should be a precision cut because I need these two pieces. I'm using a human figure to get measurements for the door. I will not use these parts that come with the kit, so let's build a window with them. This process was not easy. I've used a fifth type of saw to cut door piece properly. To simulating a door covered with a sheet metal, I'm using this plastic sheet. I'm using these plastic profiles for building the door frame. Let's add the hinge details using with plastic rods. Deformation and damage effect on the door. and the windows with the same way. Now I am adding the grate using with the plastic rod. I found this plastic sheet in a local hobby store. It looks like an frosted glass. Now finally it's time to use it. One more little details, a crack effect. I cut this piece from a part that came with the kit and I will not use. Let's build a padlock from scratch. I painted the inner walls of the container with black before. All the container parts are ready, so let the assembly begin.
I'm adding the welding effect over the modified parts with a liquid putty. Yes, these parts are badly welded by desk shop people with no manual labor skills. The container barely fits to the truck bed, so I need to modify the truck bed sidewalls. These are molded in closed position. I will modify them to open position. How about build an air conditioner in 35 scale? Although it is a bit demanding to build, this set is very detailed and deserves this effort. The mud guards didn't seem right to my eye. Let's add some texture and warm effect with a modo tool. I want to add a hatch to the top of the container. I imagine this is the real door for entrance to the container. The other one is the false door as a precaution to the looters. I made it with some plastic profiles and shit. No big deal. I'm adding more details to the top of the container with remaining parts of the truck bed sidewalls. We need a ladder for access both doors. Also need some support struts on the truck bed.
extra supports to make permanently closed the original doors. More welding effect. These tires are the worst part of this great kit. They are so soft and impossible to sand. Also they are solid rubber without any space. This means that the weight on tire effect I intend to apply to them will be very difficult. Let's try it anyway. I can describe this method roughly as follows. First I cut from both sides without damaging the side walls of the tire. And I gouge the middle part with a knife. I am going to use this 3 ton epoxy putty. This stuff is nasty and it smells terrible. But it's the strongest adhesive I ever use. As I mentioned before, these tires are solid rubber and they weigh don't effect barely visible because of that. I will explain this more clear on the next episode. Since I applied this effect there will be definitely be alignment problems with the wheels later. To avoid this situation I will need to add some flexibility to the wheels. Let's do it. Now I can move them 1 or 2 mm up or down. After 24 hours later, I can cut and clean the excess pieces on the tires. Let's add some dent effect to the hood. I will use some parts of this kit. I'm starting to the paint with primer.
I'm spraying the real primer of the wickle on random spots over the metallic painted parts. I will apply multi-layer paint chipping effect with a hairspray. The first layer is this. I painted the wooden surfaces with this before. After the paint is completely dry, I wet the piece with clean water and rub the areas I want to have a chipping effect with a toothbrush. After that I am applying the second layer. To be honest, this method didn't work this time. I probably applied the spray too much. Anyway, no problem. I can live without a multicolored paint chipping effect. But the effect I applied with single layer worked perfectly. I'm painting the details of the truck cabin before assembly.
Before applying the gloss varnish layer, I am painting the tires. I use Zippo Fluid and Tamiya Panel Liner as a pigment applicator. Also, the Tamiya Panel Liner gives filter effect to the pigment. I'm applying the Tamiya Panel Liner first. And then I'm applying the pigments with the mixture of Zippo Fluid and Panel Liner. I don't use any brand of pigment. I make mine using with soft pastels. Thus I can to create the color and shade pigment what I want. Here is a demonstration for you. I apply soft pastel on the surface with the help of Zippo fluid first. Dark to lighter color. And the Tamiya panel liner tinted with Zippo fluid. dried mud and soil effect. As you may have noticed, the effect is not obvious when wet. However, it becomes this after it dries. I swept away the excess with a brush. I'm fixing the tires to the model on a flat surface. I have to make sure all the wheels are touching the ground. Let's add the remaining details before apply the matte varnish. I couldn't stop doing this. Yes, post shade weathering. You can do it the same with pigments. This is just way easier for me.
tast en dort effect. And here is the fun part. I saw this graffiti on internet and I thought it would look beautiful on the left wall of the container. Of course I can't paint it as beautiful as a graffiti artist. I will try to do as best I can. Thanks to my Russian subscribers who helped me for these pessimist slogans in Cyrillic alphabet. I'm making pipes and cables of the air conditioner with lead wires and Teflon tape. I would like to add more details to this area, however I had to settle for this as there was a time and material limitation. Believe or not, I found this from a park near my house. I don't know what kind of plant leaves these are, but they look like scammer tree leaves at 35 scale. I'm fixing them with water diluted white glue. Well, thanks for watching this episode. If you liked the video, please like and share. Subscribe my channel if you haven't yet. Also, you can support my channel if you can see the join button below or on Patreon. The links are in the information section below. See you soon on the next episode. Until then, take care yourself and keep modeling. Bye.